Hey guys, my name's Philip and welcome to my shop. So today we're going to be working on the sawhorse build. Uh, this is going to be the first video of a series of videos, um, basically going through step by step how to build these James Cronoff style sawhorses. So today's video is going to be focused on starting out with the plans, getting an idea of the plan, uh, cut list, and then actually start picking out and roughing out the parts. And the next video will be going into the millwork. So like any project that you're going to start, obviously the first place to start is with a design. Um, and from that design, you're going to figure out your cut list. So I've already got that done. It's a, like I said, it's a very simple build. Um, although saying that, there's still a lot of really good fundamentals in this build. Um, so I would say it's anywhere from a beginning to intermediate type project. So got my plans, got my cut list off of my plans, and now I have my material. Uh, my material has been in the shop for a few weeks, uh, giving it time to acclimate to my shop, which is important. Uh, it's probably not necessary for a sawhorse build, but definitely if you're doing more complicated uh, type joinery or, you know, casework type uh, stuff where there's a lot of wood movement. So let's get started. I've already looked over my board, made sure I know where all the defects are. Go ahead and mark those out. You don't want to start roughing your parts out and end up having a big nut in it where it's not going to work. The ends have already been trimmed, so I know there's no checking, so I'm good to go. I can start from this end and just start laying it out. Anytime I do anything like this, I'm usually going to start with the biggest part. Again, I'm probably going to say this a lot, these are sawhorses, so I'm going to be a little more forgiving as far as grain uh, direction or orientation. Um, I think it's you know, not necessary for this build. So I'm just going to pull my tape and start going through the measurements. Anytime I do my cut list, I like to just do the final measurement. And in my head, I know for the length, I'm just going to add a half inch. That's plenty for me to be able to get it down, you know, final mill and get it down to final length. So length, half inch and the width and thickness, I usually add an eighth inch. Um, now, that being said, it depends on your material. Once you start the project and you start cutting your piece, if it moves, if it's got, you know, um, it, it wants to resist against you a little bit, you may have to add some more. So you have to be your own judge when you start doing this. But typically an eighth inch is more than enough um, to, to be able to get my final part out of. So the parts, the width of all the parts is basically three and a quarter. So it's real simple. So for three and a quarter, I will do three and three eighths and that should be plenty. I'm gonna start with my Upright, my legs. Let's see, 31, three quarter. Since the uprights are the longest piece, that's what I'm going to start with, and then I'll try to nestle um, the other pieces in between it. Now, I will say these boards are not the best yield. A perfect board for this project would be about like this one, seven inches or six and a half to seven, really seven inches um, would be perfect. Uh, so I'm gonna have a little waste on this, but most of this stuff will get used for something else. As I come down and I know my parts will come out of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark the board up. So I've gone through and I've pretty much determined that I can get all my parts out of her. I've labeled them real quick so I know when I look at my cut list that I'm good to go. Um, so now I'm just gonna quickly just, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly square, but I'm gonna go ahead, mark where I'm gonna cut it on the saw. I like to mark my part and the saw curve. Doesn't make that much of a difference, but if there's 30 parts within this, it adds up pretty quick. So once I know for sure that I've picked all my parts out, I just simply go to my cut list and I'll just put, you know, a tick next to it. So for this case, there's four uprights, I'll put four ticks, you know, two mid rails, two ticks and, you know, on. Uh, basically, that lets me look at it real quick and I know straight away, okay, I have those parts selected. That doesn't mean that I have them fully yet. It just means they're selected. Once I've roughed them out and I know they're going to make it in the rough out, then I go ahead and just cross it out so I know, okay, you know, I'm good to go. I can continue with the milling. 
So now I'm just gonna head over to my chop saw. Got all the parts selected, marked out. And then to the bandsaw. Okay, so now I've brought the wood over to my chop saw. I'm just simply gonna rough it out. Like I said, everything is measured a half inch longer than it needs to be. A half inch to an inch uh, maximum, I would say. And the reason for that is material can be pretty precious. It, it can be very expensive and pretty rare. So you don't wanna end up adding three inches to each side of the cut. It adds up very quickly. Uh, if your machines are set up well, the snipe issue shouldn't be a problem. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead, rough this out, and then I'm gonna take this material and rough it out to final width on the bandsaw. Okay, so now I'm over at the bandsaw. I'm gonna go ahead and rough out the parts. So anytime I rough out my parts on the bandsaw, I like to leave the parts, the final uh, measurement, an eighth inch heavy. That gives me plenty of room to get it, you know, joined, plain, flat, and get it trued. So I'm gonna go ahead, set it up. Three and, uh, let's see, sorry, three and a quarter is the final measurement. I'm gonna go ahead and set it for three and three eighths. Now I haven't gone ahead and joined anything here. Uh, for the most part, it's pretty straight. So I'm just gonna go off this rough edge. Uh, it worked just fine. If, uh, obviously if this had a big uh, dip in it or you know, something kind of crazy going on, then take it to the joiner first. Okay, so now that I have all my parts roughed out, I'm just gonna double check with my cut list. So I've got my two top rails, two mid rails, my four uprights, and my four feet. So I'm gonna go ahead, and with those ticks I did originally for picking them out, I'm just gonna put a cross through all of them. That way I know that I have all the parts I need when I go over to the joiner. It's important for more uh, big projects uh, to do that, because what can happen is, uh, you can get kind of confused with where you left off. You go to the joiner planer and there's parts that need to be joined and planed, really planed uh, as a group. So if they're all seven eighths, you need to do all your seven eighths stuff straight away. Then you go ahead and you look at your sheet and you realize, hey, I didn't put a tick through that because I'm missing two uprights. Um, so like I said, this is a pretty simple project. Uh, so we're good to go. Before I go ahead and go to the joiner and planer to do the final mill, I'm gonna let this stuff sit probably just overnight since it's just saw horses. Uh, typically on projects, I'll start roughing out and it may be a few days before I start doing the final mill on them. Uh, but before I do that, before I put it in my racks, uh, I like to sticker it up, make sure air can circulate all the way around it. I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna mark the ends of the board. I'm just gonna transfer the names of the part to the end. So when I join and plane, I'm not gonna uh, lose that information. Uh, I also would like to, you know, typically put the measurements too. So when I go to the joiner and planer, I no longer need this. I have the part, I'll group them and go ahead and take care of it. So this has been part one of the sawhorse build. Um, basically roughing out the parts, selecting and roughing out parts. Be sure to check out part two, where we get into the milling of the parts, the final mill work. Also be sure to check out the plans for this sawhorse build at philipmortyfurniture.com and please, if you like, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe and spread the word. Hope you enjoy, thanks.